lot of it started when I was watching a documentary about the tsunami and uh, the earthquake and tsunami in Japan. And as I was watching that, I wrote that song, The Waves Have Come, and, and that was one of the first songs for the album. And then as I gathered more songs for the album and wrote new stuff, there's definitely a lot of themes of, of nature, you know, the intensity of nature and how it's reflected in, in our lives. And there's also just a sense of some sort of fight to overcome the hard times in life and um, a fight to, you know, get together with the ones that you love and be there for the ones that you love and, and fight for love itself. The Demet, Ben and I, he's been working with me for about three or four years now and uh, kind of became co-producer of the project. Um, he's a really great producer and, you know, he writes electronic music and we had written some electronic songs together. Originally, maybe with the intent of doing some sort of side project or something, but, you know, eventually incorporated them into the Chelsea Wolf set. That's where, where that came from, you know, it was kind of just an experiment. I, I like to experiment with new sounds and new ways of using my own voice and the instruments and stuff. And uh, that's what kind of led us in that direction. It's kind of a, an, an experiment. I've always been singing since I was a little kid and writing songs and stuff like that. And eventually my friends and people around town encouraged me to, to play live and start singing with groups and things like that. So I made a lot of really shitty music for a long time. <laughs> a lot of really shitty singer-songwriter music and I sang on a lot of shitty projects and just, you know, tried it out. Because I knew I wanted to sing. I didn't really know what my own voice was yet or what my own style of writing was yet. And I got really sick of singing you know, my own songs. I didn't want to write breakup songs anymore and sing a songwriter shit. So I, I basically just kind of stopped playing for about a year and stepped back from music and reevaluated if, if, you know, that's what I was meant to do. And, and then a friend of mine who's a performance artist invited me to go on this European tour um, as, like, a resident musician. So each night I would just play an acoustic set and try out these songs and stuff. And that really opened me back up to music and kind of helped me find my own voice. And I started writing a lot. And I came home and... I started taking my old 8-track eight, eight recorder that was kind of like my original style anyways, which is kind of messy, noisy recording. Yeah. Um, I started taking it around town and recording in different spaces with different friends, and that became the ground the glow and just kind of evolved from there. I would pretty much just wear, like, long sleeves, black all the time, covering my face, just because I, I kind of wanted to be invisible. You know, I love music, and I love singing, and I love writing, but... Performing live is definitely something that doesn't really come natural to me, and it's, and it's always a challenge, but it's definitely part of the job, obviously. So that was my way of dealing with it at first. And then over time, I realized that I didn't, I didn't want it to be some sort of, you know, gimmick or whatever. So I, I just decided to stop wearing it. And it was kind of appropriate because it was when I released the album Apocalypse, one of the translations of that the Greek word is lifting of the veil. So I felt like it was symbolic to stop wearing it when I released that album. And that's kind of how I got into being interested in fashion because I still, I still needed a way to like feel comfortable on stage and I think exploring, you know, different designers and, and different aesthetics visually helped me to, you know, be more confident on, on stage physically um, without wearing the veil.